Hey fellow back air boyers, Nick here. Now today I'm going to show you guys how I built this bow. I made this for myself to use for the upcoming year. Just something that I can practice with and get more consistent with. This particular bow weighs 45 pounds at 28 inches. Though this build will probably yield a bow from about 40 to 50 pounds depending how you do it. It's very similar to the Hobbit in style bow. Uh, Hobbit inspired bow, but it's scaled back just a little bit. It's a really nice, kind of like a pseudo longbow type of bow with longer levers, lower working limbs. It's a really nice bow, fairly low hand shot for this size. It's got a built up handle. So, here we go. Let's get started. Hey fellow back here, boyers, Nick here. So, to build this bow, I'm starting off with a 58 inch long, 1 inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe. I've gone ahead and I marked the center, 3 inches out from the center on either side, and then 2 inches out from that 3 inch mark. So, 5 inches out from center. And then, you also want to measure 9 inches in from each end. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to heat up both limbs and flatten them starting at the 3 inch mark from the handle. So I'm not going to start from the center, I'm going to start from out here. I'm going to flatten from about an inch down to nothing. So, here we go. Here's the bow out of the flattening jig. So it's flattened and it's all ready to go. At this point what I like to do is mark the limb that's bending more. Now you want to take it and flex the bow just to see how it's doing. It should be fairly balanced at this point. If one limb is bending more than the other, it means it's weaker, it's probably too thin. So you can do one of two things. You can either reheat that limb, make it a little thicker, or you can heat up the stronger or thicker limb and make it thinner. It's your choice. Once you figured out which limb is the, the one that bends slightly more, which is this one, you want to mark it. I just have a little arrow pointing this way to tell me that this is going to be my top limb. Now that I know that, I can go ahead and start working on my, my sias or my tips here. And then once we've done that, we're going to start working on the hand. So, here we go. For the tips, I'm going to be heating with my heat gun from about here to the end and back down until this whole section puffs up. Then I'm going to actually flatten it the other way. So I'm going to flatten it perpendicular to this to a the same one inch taper that I used here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll show you what that looks like. Here's what the tip looks like after flattening it. Now I'm going to go ahead and heat this section up I'm about an inch from here up and about two inches down. I'm going to heat this up till this puffs back. Then I'm going to move this so that it's forward of my handle. And then I'm going to put a nice transition here so that there isn't a lot of stress in this one area. So, here we go. So now that it's heated up, I'm just going to bring it up, past in front, you can see what I mean. Then I just want to sight down the tip, make sure that it lines up, that everything looks nice and aligned. You want to make sure that the tip is perpendicular to the limb, that it runs straight up and down. You also want to make sure that there's a nice smooth transition here. Okay. So I'm going to let this cool. While this is cooling, I'm going to go ahead and do that same thing to this side. And then we're going to cut our tip shape, our new tip shape out of here, and then reform the tip. So, there we go. What you want to do is just mark a little design here. 
you want your sear to be, I would say about a minimum of an inch in height. It's going to get a little smaller because we're going to shape it down a little bit. So you want to make a mark like this and then cut it out with a saw. So this is what we're ending up with. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this belly portion up so that it comes in and you have a nice seam. And then I'm also going to heat this front so we can actually put some extra recurve into this. So here we go. So, I've heated it up, brought this together. I'm just going to go back and lightly grind this a little bit till I get a more refined shape and then we're going to finish this up later. So now you want to repeat this on this side and then we'll move on to the next step. Alright, this is what the bow looks like right now. Kind of look, at this point, it kind of looks a lot like the Hobbit inspired bow we did. Now what I'm going to do is heat the handle up and I'm going to shape it. So this is pretty similar to what I've always done. I'm going to actually heat the whole handle. Once the handle becomes pliable, I'm going to heat into these outer sections here. That way I can get this whole 6 inch section nice and squished and then it'll blend nicely into the rest of this. So our riser will be a little more rigid, a little wider than usual. And I'm also going to be putting some reflex into this. So, here we go. Here's the bow so far. Alright, so it looks nice, lines up. So here we have a little bit of reflex in the handle. You can see it's pretty thin. We're going for, you want about a little more than a three quarter of an inch, a little less than one inch thickness. Somewhere between three quarter and an inch is good. It'll give you nice consistency on either side of the handle and it's not too round so it's a it's a good shape plus it's not too narrow and it's got a good grip to it which we can enhance just a little bit but pretty much this is a good grip and you have a nice sight window so here's this now we're going to be putting some deflex into this instead of putting the deflex in here we're actually going to put the deflex a little further out. What we're trying to do is that when this bow is strong, we're actually trying to isolate a lot of the bending out here. And I'll explain that to you guys, a reason why you want to do that in a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead, heat these up, and then bring them back to a slight deflex so that we end up with about four inches of net reflex before this bow is broken in. So, there we go. Alright, so I've gone ahead and put my deflex in here. And I also softened up my transitions just a little bit. So you can see now it's got some really nice even curves to it. Now I'm going to let this thing cool, I'm going to cut some knocks in here, string it up, I'll show you guys what it looks like strong. So, here we go. So here's the bow, I've got a string for it. The string is 51 inches long, that's the full length of the string, and the loops are 6 inches long. So I'm going to string this up for you guys. Here it is. Woo! Alright, so 
everything's lined up. That's pretty good. You can see it's got some positive tiller here, but I'm going to keep that. I personally like bows with more of a positive tiller. Here it is. Now what we're going to do is now that the bow is strung up and everything structural was taken care of, we're going to go ahead and fill in these gaps here. I'm also going to be shaping the handle. So I'm going to show you how I do that. 